welcome to Freshly Forever, a podcast that gives you fascinating insights week after week. Here's your host, Vai Kumar. Hey, Candace, it's my absolute privilege to have you one more time on the show. Uh, earlier when you were on, we talked about nutrition response testing as an integrative healing method. And today we are here to focus on getting healthier post-COVID and nutrition focus areas. Why don't we start by having you give a self-introduction this time? I thought it'll be nice for listeners to hear you speak first. Well, wonderful, Vi. Once again, thank you so much for having me again. I love it so much. Um, Hello, listeners. Above and below, um, my name is Candace Swanson. And I am a design clinical nutritionist and kinesiologist. So what I do is I test the body for the five most common stressors, which are heavy metals, toxic chemicals, food sensitivities, scar tissue, and immune challenges, virus, bacteria, fungus, parasites, very ladylike conversations. And we just figure out what in the body is not running at 100%, why, and how do we fix it in the healthiest way possible? Oh, perfect. I think uh, that helps the listeners uh, absolutely, you know, get excited about hearing more and more of what you're going to offer here. How different is this then from acupuncture? Well, you know, it is very different from acupuncture because uh, we are not dealing with channeling chi, but it is energy work. So we are we are talking to each other's bodies through our own channels. Um, but it's, I got my start in acupuncture, so I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe this. Um, it is very different because I deal with more functional, Mm -hmm. whereas acupuncture can be just a little bit more structural, to be honest with you. Okay. Now that we are going to focus here today on COVID and getting healthier post COVID, in fact, that's what we are going to focus on. Why don't we remind people about, uh, some of the common COVID symptoms that people experience or rather whatever your patients have reported and we'll get started that way. Okay. So um, your common symptoms are flu-like fatigue. Fatigue was a big thing to be honest with you. Um, Digestive stress, um, not typically nausea, but headaches, joint pain, fatigue, Once again, inflammation, Um, one of the main telltale signs is loss of taste and smell. Mm -hmm. And so it was a terrible flu that you just couldn't shake. Okay. What about uh, symptoms like cold and cough? Oh, of course. Body aches, um, racking cough. You know, not everyone who tests positive for COVID even has a fever anymore. Mm-hmm. So this is such a, you know, it's, it's a novel virus for a reason. And so everybody's symptoms are different, but those are the, the telltale signs. Um, anything above, you know, our bodies, we run different temperatures. And so anything above maybe 101 really look into, but as a whole, sometimes we're just so fatigued that we run fevers just to say, Oh, all right, enough. Uh, let the body heal itself and fight off what it's trying to do. Um, But no, major aches, pains, shivers. Gosh, those were ridiculous. (laughs) Okay. What percentage uh, you think out of all the patients that kind of uh, you see in your practice approximately faced severe illnesses? And did they have some of these underlying conditions already, like the common comorbidities that uh, people fall under? And what about those that were asymptomatic and still had COVID? So when it comes to, oh gosh, uh, the percentages of our patients that did have COVID, um, one of the main absolute end of discussion um, regularity with everything was age. Okay. And, you know, we do, cause we treat people who aren't 
quite well. We're the uh, we're the last resort office uh, for a lot of people in major immune challenges and in terrible pain. And so the one thing that I can absolutely pinpoint uh, was age, fifty five and above. Did you experience anyone saying they seemed asymptomatic, but they still finally tested positive for COVID or, you know, somebody else in their family? I did have one patient, okay. did, but as a whole, they were highly symptomatic because we deal with a fairly unwell demographic. That's why they're here. Okay. That explains like uh, people that do not have common symptoms of any illnesses, you know, obviously don't have to resort to external help. So uh, it makes sense that you only saw people that had symptoms or for the most part, um, your personal journey with COVID. I know you had a personal diagnosis of COVID yourself. What symptoms did you have and how did you overcome them? Well, you know what? Vi, I was so spoiled by having such an amazing healthcare team around me. Um, so we'll start at the beginning and we'll work our way through it. Um, mm-hmm. Right before Christmas, I just felt a little lethargic and I chalked it up to holiday stress. Um, I'm constantly around people who are exposed. Um, mm-hmm. I don't have the luxury or privilege of staying home because I'm where people go to get healthy and stay healthy. So the day before Christmas Eve, I just kind of felt fatigued, no fever, no nothing. And Christmas Eve morning, I woke up with uh-huh. just a nasty cough. And I, I'm not a copper. That doesn't, that's not for me. I don't, I don't sneeze. I don't have those inflammatory responses. And, mm-hmm. and it was. So right there was a red flag to you. Exactly. Okay. So I quarantined myself in the basement and um, I just felt icky. And I know that's, it's such a different term, but I didn't feel well and I knew something was wrong. So I just stayed away. About two days later, so we're talking December 26th, I was trying to drink a cup of coffee and I realized that I couldn't smell it. Mm -hmm. And so at that moment, I was like, all right, it's time. Mm Mm-hmm. And so it took two days to be able to get a test. I actually had to go down to the Virginia Highlands to get one. Okay. And I wasn't out of the parking lot before they said, yes, ma'am, you're positive. So start your quarantine. And um, Mm -hmm. I had not terribly high fevers. It was maybe Mm -hmm. 101.45 was as high as that it ever got, but I had the good old fashioned flu like symptoms, Mm -hmm. the chills. I could not, I sat in a bathtub, I swear for two days. Uh, I could not get warm. Um, The cough only lasted maybe two days, but um, the muscle fatigue Mm -hmm. from constantly just shaking and racking coughs uh, lasted substantially longer Mm -hmm. than that. But um, you know, at night I would pour sweat. Mm-hmm. I swear I'm gonna have to burn that couch because my husband and I were isolating. So he was upstairs, I was downstairs. And the poor dog was very confused. And so it was nothing that I ever want to experience again because there was a moment of um I had some major drainage in my lungs and I woke up at Six Mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning, vomiting blood. Mm -hmm. And that just, it terrified me. And um, I had an amazing care team. And, you know, thankfully, because we are in alternative health, I have major access to the good stuff. So I've got all the fancy herbs and, you know, wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And um, our sweet office manager, Martina, went and picked everything up for me and dropped it off in the driveway. Mm -hmm. So I had everything because I couldn't go to the office. So I had everything that we needed Mm -hmm. just delivered straight to the door. Okay. Um, Seems like it was really um, very nerve wracking and, uh, and awful that it happened closer to Christmas. You know, who would want to fall sick around Christmas? I'm sorry about that. Oh, I don't suggest it. Mm hmm. Oh, oh no, oh no, I get you. I I totally understand. 
How has your practice helped patients post COVID? What do people that come to you hope to get addressed uh, as far as uh, their post COVID recovery? Obviously, no one can come to you during COVID. The very best they can call you, and um, I know you guys are very helpful in dropping off whatever supplements or whatever you normally give. And I know you follow design clinical nutrition approach. So again, if you can expand on that and just tell listeners how your practice has been helpful to patients. Oh, sure thing. Now, that's a very loaded question. <laughs> There's so many, different, so many different aspects to it. Oh, obviously. <laughs> What we have found is um, that our patients are in need of certain organ support post COVID. Uh huh. And that is because you know it's it's wreaks havoc on the lungs, the liver, the spleen. So all all of our first line of defense is for the immune system. Mm-hmm. And so what we find is that. We need to absolutely support the adrenals, mm-hmm. the liver, and the spleen. The lungs are really only if they're still having those issues. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have amazing respiratory herbs for that. Um, but they are dealing mostly with just good old fashion fatigue. Okay. And obviously, you are getting to see them only after like a couple of weeks post their illness. Or from the time they recover, still like a good week, week and a half after. At least. Yeah. And so at that point, you're saying these are the organ systems that typically need to be addressed. And if they still have lung issues, you are trying to, again, address that as well. Okay. Uh, What was it that they expected coming to you uh, as sort of help? And you kind of nailed down what you found was the issue or what you found as uh, target areas to address. But how did you go about doing it with your design clinical nutrition approach? Just so anyone can understand what nutrition response testing can do as far as restoring homeostasis. Absolutely. Uh, So so what we do is um, it's strictly kinesiologically based. Mm-hmm. So it's um, muscle testing, which isn't a strength test. It's a reflex test. Mm-hmm. And so what we do is we go through the body and figure out what organs, like I said, aren't working at 100% mm-hmm. and why. So what we do is I apply pressure to different areas of the body. Now, it sounds a little crazy, but that's not the actual organ or organ system. It's Mm -hmm. what's called a dermatome. Now, what that is is where the nerve endings from that organ attach to the skin. So we all have our little um, spots on our body, Mm -hmm. like liver, this is kidney. And um, I found that most people really need their adrenals to just get a little boost. Mm -hmm. It's those poor sweet adrenals, man. They handle everything. And um, if they're not working at 100%, then they can no longer maintain gut health, which gives us way more accessibility to effects of virus, bacteria, fungus, parasites. Mm -hmm. So strong adrenals or a strong body. Okay. Uh, So how can one protect their immune system? What are, you know, some of the tidbits that you would share here? Uh, I have so many herbs that I just adore. Um, And it's just the good old fashioned oil of oregano, which is antifungal, antiviral. Um, Mm -hmm. I love astragalus, which really supports the spleen. So that is better post exposure. So astragalus and uh, oil of oregano. Mm -hmm. And I also, I love olive leaf. Mm Mm-hmm. Olive leaf is just good for the whole body, you know, tip to toe. And if you have had a COVID experience, um, andrographis 
It's one of the greatest things in the world for respiratory support. What is that again? Andrographis. Um, A-N-D-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-I-S. Okay. And obviously, everyone is not going to need all of these cracks. So that's where the designed clinical nutrition part comes in. Absolutely. Okay. So how is it then that your design clinical nutrition side helps identify who needs what because you're not going to load them with all the four herbs at the same time. And uh, so how does nutrition response testing, how does it really come into the picture at that point? Well, um, I just don't believe in cookie cutter programs. Mm -hmm. And so I love being able to physically put my hands on people. Mm -hmm to see exactly specifically what their body needs. Mm -hmm. So what we would do in a situation like that is we would physically put the herbs, the homeopathics or the whole food supplementation on their body and see specifically what they needed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there can be too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. So not only will we figure that out specifically what they needed, but actually how much of everything they need. Mm -hmm. Because we can get really super awesome with some of these immune herbs. But if you take too much, you're going to make yourself a little bit sick. Okay. Yeah, obviously, you know, too much of anything is not good for nothing. Okay. Nutrition response testing then identifies, okay, what is kind of tailor-made. And and again, whatever you do is whole food-based supplementation. And it's not actual medication, correct? Correct. Okay. And is this like non-interfering and can this be combined with conventional medicine for someone that's wondering, hey, okay, what happens to this phase when I'm like going to say someone like Candace and getting things uh, addressed or figuring this out? How can I handle my other routine medications or whatever those might be? That's a great question because it's a lot of things that people are really concerned about. Mm -hmm. And when we test the body, Mm -hmm. see what it specifically needs. I also need to have my hands on any prescription medications Mm -hmm. that they might be taking Mm -hmm. because there are certain things that really don't get along. Mm -hmm. And so we need to make sure there's no medical contraindications Whole food supplementation traditionally does not interfere with prescription medications, Mm -hmm. but herbs and homeopathy really need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. So at that stage in the game, if it's something that their body is really asking for, then I will address their physicians. Okay. And let them know that, hey, this is what they've requested. Is this okay? Mm -hmm. So... Um, no, I always have to get a permission slip. Okay. And so as I understand, it's just based on the supplementation, which is sort of like an added support to the system or to the body that you help the body heal on its own by nourishing it right. Is that like how this whole thing works? It absolutely is. So, you know, our bodies are so stressed out all the time. And, you know, our food supply is a joke. Mm -hmm. Our air quality is pretty nasty and our water supply is icky. And so, you know, our organs, they're just, they're not functioning Mm -hmm. at 100%. And so, you know, you can't eat enough kale to fix it. So sometimes we do need some supplementation Mm -hmm. to go in and, for lack of a better term, give these organs a nap. And let it do the work for them so the body can heal itself. Okay. So how different is this from, again, I know we talked about this in the earlier visit that you were on, or rather when you um, were on with us on the show. How different then is this from regular supplementation that I can go and pick off of store shelves? One word, quality. Mm Mm-hmm. So I am extremely choosy Mm -hmm. of what I carry. Um, I actually don't 
allow anything in my office that can be purchased Mm -hmm. on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Um, Things that are only available to practitioners. Mm -hmm. And so that's the main thing is just, you know, it's quality. If somebody just needs to walk, if they're a diabetic and they're excited about trying cinnamon bark and they want to just get, Cinnamon, well, you can't eat that much cinnamon. Mm-hmm. We need concentrated extracts that are prepared in ethical, safe ways. And um, But everything that I do use is certified, organic, homeopathic, and whole food. So it's, it's a world of difference. Okay. Um, again, it also is important to highlight here that you focused a lot on quality, but again, this whole method of nutrition response testing also helps to identify, like the example that you brought about how much of cinnamon can one take for controlling their diabetes. You are able to kind of tailor make it to the individual by figuring out the dosing aspect, correct? Absolutely. We are talking here in the context of a global audience, and we talked about how the air quality is and so on and so forth. Do you think this whole aspect of how COVID manifests in different individuals is also environment-based? Is it a possibility? Vi, I would love to have an answer. That's a great question. I would love to have an answer mm-hmm. for that. But I I don't have enough experience to give you a concrete answer for that mm-hmm. one. Oh, I don't blame um, you. I can, first, nobody is an expert on what COVID has done to the world. And that's why I guess it's still a global pandemic. And, uh, and I ask that question all the time. And I still don't have an answer for it. And people have just now started getting vaccinated and... Yeah, I don't blame you. You know, like uh, it's possible, maybe not. Who knows? And uh, we'll figure as we go along. Back in a moment with our guest on Fresh Leaf Forever. So losing taste or smell, it's not anything funny or it's not anything enjoyable to anyone, right? So how do you help patients overcome that Candace? Well, having gone through it myself, I have found that, um, don't get discouraged. Step one, it's going to come back. Um, and so what we do is to make sure that we get all of the really wonderful herbs in the body and wonderful plants. So I find that, um, to just make sure that we get those in, I found that roasted garlic was amazing. And you could just eat one of those like a piece of candy and go on about your day. And it's very antiviral and it's amazing for the gut. It's amazing for the immune system. And, um, I also found that copious amounts of ginger are very handy for that. Now, um, Mm -hmm. make sure that you have the entire ginger root and not a powder because the powder is very, very inflammatory and can get a little stuck in the digestive tract and um, through the esophagus. So make broths out of it. Ginger, lemongrass, just think of all of our good Asian broths. And those are just amazing. And that's what I would suggest for people just to keep that immune system nice and boosted. While I mean, your house might stink to high heaven, but it doesn't matter. You can't smell it anyway. So um, that, that was very handy. Okay. So this is kind of like a work in progress or work in process, so to speak, until someone can regain their smell. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. So what in general are some common diet myths and how would you address that? Well, when it comes to COVID specific, um, some of the myths are you need to be strictly vegan or strictly vegetarian. Um, But in reality, it's eat what you can get down, eat what feels good to you. So long as it's healthy. Um, I still can't get down beef or chicken, but, um, you know, those have amazing nutrients as well, but keep it what I call lean, green, and leafy. Um, make sure that you get 
all of your good dark leafy greens in, good citruses, because those are amazing to boost the immune system. And not only that, but just to make you feel better. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody that doesn't eat an orange and say, wow, I feel pretty now. So, (laughs) um, So I would suggest just a great balanced diet, good fruits and vegetables, lean meats, you know, stay away from, of course, any sort of fried food. I would limit dairy um, because that does stimulate the mucous membranes. And so if you're coughing or if you're sneezing or if your nose is running off your face, then I would definitely, um, you don't have to cut out dairy if you don't want to, but definitely cut it at least in half. Okay. What about things like golden milk? That's so popular these days. And do you think the turmeric in there helps? The turmeric, um, the cardamom, the cloves are amazing for the immune system. And they're also quite anti-inflammatory. Now, the great thing about golden milk is that you can make it with um, any sort of nut milk that you'd like. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to stick with traditional dairy. And you can go outside the box and have some sort of vegan alternative. Now, the great thing also about golden milk is that it relaxes the body. Mm -hmm. And so for some people that are either having trouble sleeping because they're coughing or because they have a fever, uh, it just will nicely relax the body and just let you ease on off to sleep and get some rest. Because if we don't rest, we don't heal. Okay. And you talked about lean meats earlier. So for anyone that's vegan or vegetarian, Still saying what they do is totally the way to go. But then for others, you're suggesting, as I hear, just eat whatever you feel comfortable. Exactly. And whatever seems comforting to you. Whatever will nourish your body. Okay. So I'm not saying to cut anything out, but if it's your particular lifestyle to maintain um, veganism and vegetarianism, that absolutely do that. Just make sure you get some serious dark leafy greens in there. Okay. What is it that you found helpful to eat during COVID uh, since you suffered through it? Uh, I guess this question makes more sense. And post-COVID, what would you suggest someone do to achieve the balance back in the body, say the homeostasis? Sure thing. Uh, What I found incredibly helpful was ginger. Mm-hmm. I have never had more ginger in my entire life and I would make just a broth out of it. Just take the roots, throw it in some water or vegetable broth, whatever worked for you with some green onions or shiitake mushrooms or something. And, um, I would make just vats of that and leave it in the crock pot for days and, um, just grab a cup or two every day. And I felt like not only did that keep me nourished, but um, it kept my digestion regulated because Mm -hmm. all that drainage, it can sometimes really upset your tummy and you might spend more time in the bathroom than you enjoy. And so I found that was amazing for me. And the roasted garlic, I would just eat that like a hard candy. And I cannot even imagine how I smelled and I did not care because I felt better. Okay. For anyone that has uh, any aversion to garlic or for certain people that have a hard time and garlic doesn't work, are there any alternatives to pursue? There are um, onions. Mm -hmm. Now, raw onions do not agree with every single person on the planet, but cooked onions, just cook them down. Do what I did with the ginger, you know, put it in the crock pot and let it just steep for a while and then drink the broth if your body doesn't actually digest the fibers. But onions are amazing when it comes to the immune system. They're antiviral, antifungal, antiparasitic. So um, there are a lot of other options other than um, garlic because it does not agree with everybody. Okay. If neither onion nor garlic, still do we have anything else that can help people? Lemongrass. Ginger shiitake mushrooms mm-hmm. are amazing. Mushrooms as a whole are just so healing. Mm-hmm. And so if you can get them down in their raw form, it's amazing. Otherwise, give them a little roast, throw them in the pan, make a stock out of them. And so mm-hmm. on that just depends on, you know, everybody's experience with this was so different. My husband and I had incredibly different experiences. Mm-hmm. And so that's why it's a novel virus. We don't know. And um, so those are just amazing 
Now, um, if you want to go more of an herbal route, astragalus is amazing. Olive leaf, oil of oregano. There are other things that you could do that don't have to be strictly food-based, but are still plant-based. Okay. But again, take it with the help of a practitioner or from uh, someone that can guide you. Not overdo anything, even food, be it supplements, be it food. Just don't overdose yourself with anything, but make sure to include them. And Absolutely. as far as supplements, include them the right way with the guidance of a practitioner. Absolutely. Correct? Okay, obviously no one wants to see someone with COVID, but again, over the phone or whatever form they can. It's why we have virtual visits. Okay, whatever form they can help get the product to them, that'll help. As far as focus areas going forward, what would you say? Now people are in the face of vaccinations and there's probably this thought that, okay, once I'm vaccinated, I can meet up with family and I can do all the things that I normally would do. Uh, but we also hear about the variants and whatnot. And so what is your message to people um, to focus on going forward? And how can one keep themselves healthy? Well, that's a great question. And uh, with the vaccines rolling out and people are feeling a little more comfortable, we still have to remember to use our common sense. Mm -hmm. uh, just because you are not affected doesn't mean that you're not still a carrier. And so we can also, uh, we can infect other people. And that's the same with any virus. Now, mm -hmm. um, what I would suggest to people is, you know, don't go partying it up. But make sure you get outside, even though we are covered in pollen right now, just to get outside, get some good natural vitamin D. Vitamin D is the best thing we have to fight this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it doesn't have to be a lawn party with your neighbors, but go for a walk. You know, mm -hmm. Maintain your social distancing. Make sure that you keep a healthy, balanced diet. Um, you know, a vaccine is not a permission slip to do whatever you want, mm -hmm. your own personal protection. So make sure that you're also protecting other people as you go. Um, follow CDC guidelines, follow your state mandates and follow your good old fashioned common sense. So, but make sure we have a balanced diet, get those lean, green and leafy foods in, um, make sure that you're drinking enough water. We have mm -hmm. to be able to flush this out, um, get sunshine. Keep a regular exercise routine to the best of your ability. You know, we like to say that 30 minutes a day is one of the best things you can do. If you can't do that, then do as much as you can. You know, be okay. it cardio, be it yoga. Just make sure that you take care of yourself while you're taking care of other people. Okay, that's great advice. And is there anything else you think you need to add here as far as your experience or whatever you have seen with patients. And so it seems like there was encouraging news uh, as far as what you said regarding that loss of smell aspect, although different people experience different longevity with uh, the unfortunate aspect of losing taste or smell, there is still kind of hope in terms of getting it back. And there are ways to kind of work your way towards better health. Absolutely. Now, what I found is um, I do a process and it's don't laugh, but it's actually called smell training. Mm -hmm. And it's basically physical therapy for your nose. Mm -hmm. And um, there are certain smells that can trigger the olfactory senses to come back to mm -hmm. what they need to be. And what I found the best ones for there were um, clove, which is mm -hmm. already so great for the immune system anyway, helps support healthy thyroid function. And I clean with it. And honestly, if I'd never smell it again, I'll be happy. But um, so it was clove, eucalyptus and lemon. Mm -hmm. And so what I would do is I would, I happen to have the essential oils. If you have the actual plant, fire away. But I would close my eyes and concentrate and smell this deeply for 10 seconds, just mm -hmm. deep breaths. And then while thinking about, Hey, this is, imagine the lemon, you know, imagine the clove bud. And so that was fantastic um, for me. And then you do that just a few times a day and it picks back up. 
And so you just have to remind yourself what it's like, what it's supposed to be like and how you Mm -hmm. imagine it. Because memories and smell, they're so, so attached to each other. And I found that that really works for me. Okay. Do that a few times a day. It's better. Okay, great. I think that's uh, a good tip, you know, to kind of tune your body back to what it used to be. So that's a good one. Okay. So you talked about what you did towards um, getting your sense of of smell back, right? So is there something that you uh, practice-wise try to teach your patients to be able to achieve that? Absolutely. Uh, There are certain exercises that you can do. And um, I really want to share one with you, which is what I tell my patients um, that they can do at home, because I would love to always have them with me, but that's just not realistic. Mm -hmm. And so there's a little bit of homework they can do. And what they can do is just tap right on their, we call it the glabella, the third eye, the pineal gland, Um, but right between the eyes, just go to your eyebrow and go up just a couple centimeters and you can constantly tap that. And what that does is it stimulates the olfactory nerve. Mm -hmm. So um, I would suggest people just so they get um, a little feel of it to have a piece of candy or fennel or something with very strong flavors, you know, have a piece of gum in your mouth. And so, and continue to do that. And then when you can taste it and smell it, then that's it. You're, you're done and do it okay. a few times a day. So that's, that's a nice little homework that they can do on their own. Okay. So kind of do like a few minute thing, maybe like a few times a day. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And that was quite yeah. beneficial for me. Okay. So that benefited you a lot. Okay. Okay. I think that's good insights here. What about microbiome then in warding off illnesses? How you talked about gut health earlier. I said the gut is just the best thing on the planet Mm -hmm. when it's working, Mm -hmm. when it's not working, hmm, dear diary. But, um, you know, everything that we can do to support a healthy gut microbiome is outstanding. So let's have our fermented foods, our sauerkraut, our kimchi, you know, make sure you're taking a probiotic and make sure it's the right probiotic. Mm -hmm. And so something you get off the shelf that has you know, a little bit of acidophilus and that's it. So um, supporting gut health right now is just so huge. Mm-hmm. And maybe natural sources of probiotic, because even all the plant-based food, I know you're a big believer in uh, plants and uh, you're so connected to everything plant-based as well. And I guess building the microbiome on a consistent and regular basis and even upfront helps possibly ward off any illness for that matter, or at least uh, the magnification or manifestation of it is probably less intense when it comes to having a good microbiome. Okay, the illness is probably at least more manageable than what it is to somebody else who does not have a good gut microbiome. Absolutely. Okay, so how can one build it, you know, if not a off the shelf probiotic, because again, that's not a one size fits all eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, colors of the rainbow. Is that like a good way to do it? You know, it absolutely is. That's, um, it's a wonderful starting point Mm -hmm. because we all need to be doing that no matter what, but, um, you know, there are certain fermented foods that can really help support that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's go sauerkraut, pickles, my favorite, kimchi. Mm -hmm. If you can stomach it, go for it. Good Greek yogurts Mm -hmm. that are unsweetened that can give us just great little tidbits in our gut. Um, Apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. And And again, any ethnic uh, probiotic uh naturally probiotic inherent foods to every different culture like you pointed out kimchi and you know which is part of uh asian is that like uh korean i believe it is okay so anything inherent in different cultures that is fermented value and that's natural 
uh, makes added benefit. What else should one focus on then to remain healthy? Would it be exercise? Would it be a good vitamin nutrient profile overall? How consistently can one keep up with their body and health? Well, I use one word for this, balance. Mm -hmm. And it is eat lean, green, and leafy foods. Exercise 30 minutes a day Mm -hmm. to the best of your ability. If -hmm. it means that you walk at one mile an hour, that's great. If it means that you run or if you do yoga Mm -hmm. or anything, just get that body moving. Eliminate as much sugar as you can and keep that water intake Mm -hmm. as high as you can get it. Okay. That's definitely uh, good tips right there. It's something simple to do as well. And the month of March happens to be National Nutrition Month. And what would you say one should focus no matter what month it is? Okay, so I love, love, love this month. Um, I find it sad that we Mm -hmm. have to have a month dedicated to it because we should be doing this all the time, right? Um, But the theme Mm -hmm. for uh, National Nutrition Month is... Pick your plate because no diet works for everyone. And so I Mm -hmm. love it that it really ties into um, what I do and making sure there's no cookie cutter um, diets or diet plans or meal plans, anything for anyone. So the one thing that I would say is the, the one step forward that you need every day is get moving. Okay. And again, We talked about the different even naturally fermented foods that are available. Even figuring out what works well for someone's individual body type can be tested by your method. Is that right? Absolutely. So how do you go about identifying that? So do I just pick whatever is my favorite kimchi bottle from the shelf and bring it to you or the yogurt or whatever it is? You absolutely do do that. And we put it specifically on the body and we ask it five questions. And that's, does it deplete my vitamins? Does it deplete my minerals? Is it too acidic or is it too basic? And then we talk to the vagus nerve and ask the body, are there any allergies involved? Mm -hmm. And if those five things all check out, bon appetit. Okay, perfect. And you talked about empowering herbs and extracts that help heal someone. You listed a few. Are there anything else that you would like to add? And uh, would any anything else be beneficial? And again, can listeners just take it on their own? We have talked so much about nothing is tailor-made for someone. So right. how important is it for us to emphasize whether they have the liberty to just go and buy something? Because one may think, oh, I don't live next to Candace, so how in the world am I going to identify what's right for me? Well, it is imperative that you figure out what specifically is right for you. Mm -hmm. So whether you live next door to me or not, find someone who can help you. Mm -hmm. My four favorites that I shared with you, um, so that's olive leaf, oregano, astragalus, and andrographis. Mm -hmm. They are wonderful, but... The person who's going to be ingesting them needs to make sure that they're right for them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is, you know, call your doctor, whoever, if you're on prescription medications. And that's as much as I hate to say that, it's just the ethical thing we have to do. Okay. But again, for some that are not able to help them as far as an integrative approach, if the physician is not able to help, how is it that having you or a practitioner like you work in conjunction with their physician, how does that work? How can one identify a similar practitioner like you? Where would anyone listening to this go? Is there something on the internet? Is there like a directory? How can someone do that? So what they can do is go to good old fashioned Google Mm -hmm. and look up nutrition response testing Mm -hmm. practitioners in their area. And if they just add in uh, their zip code, it usually pops up pretty well. Um, If not, then they can contact me and I will 
make a few phone calls and I will find something for them. Just real quick, is this global? It is actually. It okay. as of about two years ago. It's quite global. Okay. And what about uh, the vaccines now that some part of the population is vaccinated? What is the feedback from your patients post-vaccination? So my patients who have been vaccinated are all in the 55 and above age range. Mm-hmm. When I test them, they always, always, always test for viruses. Of course, because they have a new little snippet in their body. Mm-hmm. And don't we all inherently have like certain amount of viruses always in our body? It's not like it's 100% foolproof and clean. Uh, oh, no. No, viruses, they, they stay with us. Mm-hmm. You can't get rid of a virus. And that can be from vaccinations, uh, some live vaccines, which mimic the actual ones. It can be from mono as a teenager. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that I've noticed with patients that have been vaccinated is their adrenals are a little bit better mm-hmm. and they just want to keep it that way. Okay. So they all test for viruses just because it's in their bodies right now. Mm-hmm. And that's just antibodies. That is what it is. Okay. And, and the adrenals being better is indicative of uh, the immune system having revved up to receive what has been offered to them or put in their system. Is that kind of like decent enough explanation or inference from it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And takeaways and your contact information for listeners. There is one thing that I harp and harp and harp about, and um, it's one word. It's balance. Mm -hmm. There is no cookie cutter for anybody. Drink water, eat real food, move your body. And if you have any questions, even if you're not local, please reach out. My name is Candace Swanson. I'm on Facebook. My telephone number, feel free to call me directly is area code 678-237-3323. Feel free to use it. You're more than welcome. And would you like to add an email for those that prefer that route of communication? My email is Candace, C-A-N-D-A-C-E, at alternahealthsolutions.com, which is A-L-T-E-R-N-A-H-E-A-L-T-H-S-O-L-U-T-I. I-O-N-S dot com. Sorry, it's the world's longest email, so I'm just rattling off in my brain. <laughs> yeah, no, you're more than welcome to always reach out. <laughs> Maybe that was a good alphabet lesson for <laughs> anyone listening to. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay. Fun conversation as always, Candace, with you. And uh, I'm happy to add here that You are my nutrition response testing practitioner as well. And whenever I think my body needs help, I approach you. And I'm glad to be here, local to you here in the state of Georgia in the United States. And I'm able to take advantage of whatever you offer. Obviously, none of this is uh, personalized medical advice. And like you correctly pointed out earlier, people should... uh, take advantage and benefit from it. But at the same time, they need to include their physician in whatever care program that is intended. And uh, always for a case-to-case basis, people should contact their physician and uh, work in conjunction with you if necessary or if with any other practitioner. Thanks so much for being here and enlightening us one more time. And I'm glad you were able to fight off COVID and you're now feeling healthier and stronger, stable. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Y'all take care. As always, it was a fun and insightful conversation with yet another guest here on Freshly Forever. Before I sign off, folks, let me remind you to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Spotify, or Google, and follow the podcast on Instagram at Fresh Leaf Forever. That's one word. And on Twitter at Fresh Leaf Forever One. Keep enjoying the podcast. 
I will see you back again next week with yet another guest and yet another interesting topic. Until then, it's bye, saying so long.